بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وبارك على الأشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد الحمد لله We uh, reach the next part, uh, the next chapter in relation to the Kitab al Siyam, um, which is the chapter referring to Ma Yufsi the Song. Bab Ma Yufsi the Song. So, the chapter pertaining to that which <coughs> nullifies the fast, the things that nullify the fast. And. Before we begin with that, just uh, a point to mention as well, what we dis- from what we discussed in the last lesson, uh, about the one that are permitted to break the fast. I mean, we were discussing the, the pregnant woman, uh, the hamid, as well as the uh, breastfeeding woman. And Allah Ta'ala was best upon Maraja of the Masala. The strong opinion is that she suffices with the it'am or the miskeen so to feed the poor individual for each day that she doesn't fast so if the woman is pregnant and she's uh, not fasting during the month of Ramadan and for argument's sake the month of Ramadan is 30 days then she feeds 30 people and per person for each of the days that she misses and uh, that's the that seems to be the, the stronger of the opinions in that regard. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Now and so here we have the mas'ala of or the, the chapter referring to refer to the one that breaks the fast. I what nullifies the fast. As Ibn Qadama, Rahimahullah, he mentions, وَمَنْ أَكَلْ أَوْ شَرِبْ وَاسْتَطَعْتْ أَوْ وَصَلْ إِلَى جَوْفِ شَيْءٍ مِنْ مَوْدِعِ كَانْ أَوْ إِشْتِقَاء فَقَاء فَاسْتِمَاء أَوْ قَبَّلْ أَوْ لَمَسْ فَعَمْنَا أَوْ عَمْذَا أو قرر نذر حتى عنزل أو احتجم عامدا ذاكرا لصومي فسد. And so here, Ibn Qudama has mentioned particular affairs that is regarded and he regards to be the things that break the fast. نعم, things that break the fast. And we'll go through each of them and then we'll divide them. And they're divided into different types. We mentioned this as well in the beginning. So he mentions whoever eats or drinks. Naam. Or causes something to enter the stomach. Naam. For whatever means it occurs. Whoever brings out vomit. And whoever causes themselves to ejaculate, to, uh, to release seminal fluid. Whoever kisses, whoever touches, and thus, by way of kissing or touching, seminal fluid is released. Whoever Repeatedly looks, has a, has a repeated look at something which arouses them and causes them to release seminal fluid. And whoever does hijama, does the action of hijama, or 
is the one that hijab has been done to. Then such a person has broken a fast if they do it intentionally, <coughs> as well as whilst they are aware that they're fasting. So these are the things that I mentioned here by Ibn Qadam rahimahullah. And they, these things that are from the Musadat or so, the things that nullify a person's fast can be categorized into two categories. It can be either an action that the person does an action which causes them to be weakened. So they do an action which causes them to be weakened. As well, thus nullifies their fast. Or it can be an action which causes them to be strengthened. And thus nullifies the fast. Is that clear? The two di- difference between the two. Now, we'll go through each of them and then we'll discuss whether it falls into this or that. Now, and so, as mentioned, if we have an individual where first and foremost he eats or he drinks he eats or drinks which one does that fall into? now nah, it could be an action of strengthening the, the person's body physically or it's the ta'at whoever I for example, place something with the nose. So sometimes medicine or anything of the like. So it helps something with the nose. Now, this is the actual known as su'ut. Which one is this fall into? Strengthening as well. Or causes anything that reaches the stomach. I ingest anything that reaches the stomach. Then... Again, strengthens. Then, God's narration, the one forces themselves to vomit. Weakens. Now, they force themselves to vomit, so they're weakening oneself. Or, they do an particular action where they, it causes themselves to release seminal fluid. Weakens. Now, likewise as well, mentioning along with that, the kissing or the touching, and thus, as a result of that, they release seminal fluid. Weaken. Uh, and likewise, the other, other example given as well, the person has a repeated look, a repeated look at something that arouses the individual, which thus causes them to uh, release the seminal fluid, and that is weakening as well. And then we have the example of the hijama, and that is an example of what? Strengthening? Weakening, essentially. Because you're releasing blood from the blood, from the, taking blood out of the body. Allah Ta'ala knows best. So, as for this affair of the eating and the drinking, the first one mentioned, then no doubt this is something which is understood to be the haram. To eat and drink whilst fasting. Or for Ashwan, before that. When we're discussing the Muftarat, when we're discussing the things that nullify the fast, then there are particular conditions that occur, or there are particular conditions that occur now, where we thus include these things to be, fi- to, be to these actions to be actions that nullify the fast. The first one from these, from these conditions, Barakallahu Fikum, is that these actions occur after the dawn. So after Fajr. So these actions occur after Fajr. The second The second is that the person does so 
amdan. So they're doing the action deliberately. And then the third is that the action is done to the Quran. They're doing the action whilst they have remembered that this is something that they cannot do whilst fasting. So what's the difference between the second and the third then? So the second being condition we just mentioned is what? Deliberately. Deliberately. The third is that they do it whilst having knowledge. How is that any different from why how is the two different from three? They did it. So how how is number two different from three, sorry? <coughs> so you say there's a scenario where a person could do so and then remember. So then, are we, then what would you say that they done it deliberately then? So they would say two or three then, in that case. Now, so about the forgetfulness, then that's, that's number, that deals number three. Now, that they have to have been, and they have to have remembered, and they have to have been, uh, have knowledge of the fact that they're doing this action. But number two, what's the difference with number two then? They? Okay. So they're deliberately eating, okay. And they know they know they should be fasting. So how does that differ from number two? Number three, sir, yeah. Knowledge. Not necessarily that. Ignorance and knowledge, not necessarily ignorance and knowledge. So, number one, the shadow is clear. Number one is that the first condition is that it has to be done after Frederick. Now, because this is when you're fasting, of course. Number two is that it's done as a deliberate act which is done. Right? Number three is that it's done whilst the person is uh, is aware, basically. Is aware that this is an action that, that, is a break, uh, that breaks the fast. So it's, it's basically the opposite of the one that forgets. Number three is the opposite of the one that forgets. So, so you say the same as number two? Yes. Mm-hmm. Huh? <laughs> Say that again. They use force. That's the difference. When we're talking about number two, that they're doing the action, basically they're doing it of their own volition. So they're doing it of, of his own, he's doing it off his own back. That he's eating it himself. Now, with irrespective of whether he is aware of. Um, or if he's forgotten or not, he's intended to eat. So it's not the reason why we say as well that it's done it's something done which is and for example, someone <coughs> he could be for the riding a bike and if something enters his mouth, nah, he swallows it. Are we gonna say that he's broken his fast? No. Nah. Why? Because he didn't he didn't do so and he didn't he didn't do so deliberately. No, nah, I'm saying it wasn't something where he intended to eat that whatever whatever he entered into his mouth. Now, nah. the third we're talking about the, the one that's, that has tadakur. That is the individual that has remembered and is well aware that is that is uh is that he's fasting. Now, nah, so obviously this is a, an opposition to the one that eats. So he eats. He he he, he does a second in terms of he he's normally eating. But he forgot now that he's fasting. So it's a case of the person does actually have to fudge it. That's one. Number two, he know he's knowingly doing the action that breaks the fast. Number three is that he's well aware that he's fasting. 
Now, in these scenarios, that's when we will say that this is the person that has broken the fast and he has nullified the fast. Does that make sense? What? Jay. And. <clears throat> As for what is upon the individual that breaks the fast, now, what is upon him? Then the first thing upon him is that is the facade of soul. of siyad al So the first thing, as the Shaykh Abbas Shaykh is that the first individual. Such an individual has to, or has has um, has nullified the fast of that day. Such an individual has nullified the fast of that day. That's the first thing. The second, yom sik bakiya till yom. So the second thing is that he has to continue to fast the rest of that day. So. Give a scenario. Let's say, for example, the person is fasting. <coughs> Shaitan comes to him. Shaitan comes to him and says, you know what, just eat. You're too hungry, you're too thirsty, whatever. Just eat. And so the person eats. But then, directly after that, he regrets it. Now, know that the first thing we mentioned is that the fast is nullified. The person's fast is nullified for that day. The second, though, is that he must not now just continue eating throughout the day. He must continue to fast for that day. Now, so even though the fast now, he, he, he's not going to be rewarded for the fast for that day, he must continue to fast for that day. Now, and the third is an ithum. The third is that the person is blameworthy and sinful. For yajibu alayhi at tawba wal istighfar. Naam. And so, what is upon him is to make tawba and to seek forgiveness as such an individual. Naam. Now, so these are the three things that we say for the one that breaks the fast. Now, the first being what? Not this one. The, for the, the three things that are upon the individual that breaks the fast. So the fast is not accepted for the day. So the fast, he's, he's not find the fast for that day. Second, he must complete the fast for that day. And the third is upon him is repentance, told because he's fallen into a uh, major sin. But that was the Arab list. So, thereafter, Bukhdar mentions uh, examples of that, the things that break the fast, the eating and the drinking. Now, after eating and drinking, and the proof of the state of Allah to Allah Ta'ala, and thus, and then complete the, the fast until the night. And thereafter, Allah Ta'ala states, وَقُولْ وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْتُ الْعَبْيَدُ مِنَ الْخَيْتِ الْعَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ Now Allah Ta'ala mentions, and eat and drink until the white thread is distinguished from the black of the fajr. I have a time of fajr. And so, if the person has eaten or is eating or drinking, and uh, Rukhdara mentions here, Mukhtar, so it's of his choice as well. That can so be. Abdullahu. So in this scenario, the person has broken the fast and nullified that fast. 
لأنه فعل ما ينافي صوم لغير الأذر why because he's done that which nullifies a fast without any due excuse and so when it comes to the eating and the drinking Ibn Khadar mentioned as well سواءً كان غذاءً أو غير غذاءً and so Ibn Khadar mentions that eating or drinking I saw ingesting anything whether it be from solids or liquids, it's irrespective of whether it's ghadaan, whether it's something which nourishes or does not nourish. Now, so any time a person puts a, a, just a substance, then, at this scenario, then we'll say that the person has broken the, fa- broken the fast. Thereafter as well, he mentions that or in the inhaling in the nose. I right, so inhale it in the nose. It's the same as so I put something in the mouth. <coughs> the proof for that <coughs> The proof for that is the same with the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith <coughs> when he's discussing the wudu. وهي بنشد بالغ في الاستنشاق إلا أن تكون صائمة. so he mentions that Islam to Islam, I to be plentiful and to do so in a large, large amount, inhaling the water in istinshaq, except for if you are fasting. So except for if you're in a scenario where you're fasting. And so this indicates that the one, if you inhale too much water, then it may enter the stomach and thus break the fast. Likewise, Ibn Qadamah mentions as well, or anything reaches the stomach, right, for the things that nullify the fast, anything reaches the stomach. And so this may be from anything from the medication. That person has. And here he mentions with any molder in can from any place. Meaning that if the as, as long as it meets the stomach, then it's something that breaks the fast. Why? Because it's possible that something may reach the stomach without the person eating it within the mouth or inhaling it within, within the nose. Is Kadalik? Mm-hmm. So, for example, as mentioned with some of the medicines, the person may inject some some medication directly into the stomach. Now, or medication may enter the the, the, the bloodstream or may enter the enter the stomach in, in by the way different means. And so, with this, there's mentioned that this is something that all of these things break the fast. Now. And so, this is why you find that sometimes even Ahlul Ilm, they have caution, even when it comes to the, uh, when it comes to the, the drops, uh, ear drops and eye drops, and the fear that it may reach the stomach. But as mentioned by Sheikh Fazal, that which is apparent is that there's no, there's no uh, specific means of the ear, or there's no specific link between the ears and the stomach, or the eye and the stomach. So a person takes these particular drops, then there's, there's no harm in them taking those drops whilst they're fasting. It's just that they, the person must have caution in making sure nothing enters the nose and the mouth that may cause that to enter the stomach. We're taking these particular medications. Allah to Allah's best. Now, likewise as well, the one that vomits yani, voluntarily then upon him is qada. Upon the person is to make up that fast. Now, and now, Ibn Mundir, 
he mentions Wahaka al Ijma fi Dalik. Ibn Mundur mentions Ijma in that regard. And so he mentions, Ibn Mundur mentions, Ajma ahl al ilm al ibtal al sawm man istaqa. Yani abidan. And so he mentions that ahl al ilm are upon the consensus that the fast of the individual. The fast of the individual that uh, causes himself to vomit deliberately is null and void. My question for you, Echwa Barakallahu Fikum, what is the significance of Ibn Mundan here mentioning the Ijma in that regard? What's the significance of his, of his mentioning this? Alhamdulillah. Is which is the Ahlul Ilm consensus, a movement. You see that there's no difference of opinion in the matter? Nah, that's, that's, that's essentially what Ishma is. Yeah. But why, what's, what is the significance of him mentioning that? No one can say the difference of opinion after that? No. Something else as well. What's the significance of Ishma in the midst Ijma is proof is a proof in of itself. Ijma is a proof in of itself. And so what Ibn Mundur now is mentioning that this is a this is Ijma in this regard, in this particular mas'ala. Now then is it's it's, it's, it's tied out to him mentioning a particular mas. Now because it's a proof in of itself. The Ijma that in this, in this regard is a proof in of itself. Well that's how knows best. Now, thereafter, you have the muscle of istimna as well. Istimna. Istimna is the action which is, uh, of course, an, uh, which is an action which is regarded as being haram, 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 and is sometimes referred to as colloquially as an ada sirriya, as an ada. Surya, yani the secret habit if they, if they call it. And this action, no doubt, is one where the person causes them causes the uh, release of seminal fluid. Now, so uh, uh, the general the general speech of the relation to the action is that it's haram. Now, but then when we relate it now to this affair of. Um, the fasting individual, then it is not only just haram, but it's from the things that nullify the fast. It's from the things that nullify the person's fast. Allah Ta'ala knows best. Thereafter as well, now, thereafter as well, it has the mentioning of the one that uh, kisses or touches, I touch it in, 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 a, in a manner which is arousing. Naam. Or has the, has the repeated look in a manner which is arousing as well. And then thereafter releases seminal fluid that this also breaks the fast. This also breaks the fast. Naam. What or why is this mentioned as something that breaks the fast though? This this particular action. How does this relate to the others? If you say. It's usually it's like sexual intercourse. You know, because obviously you you're, you're going away from ibadah in a way. You know, by fasting and obviously you achieving. That you've gone away from ibadah, not necessarily that. <coughs> but if we just look at it almost like mechanically, and if if we look at the conditions you mentioned earlier. How does this fit into those conditions? It weakens. It weakens that's one thing. It's, it's a deliberate act. So each of these things that I was mentioned, the kiss, the touch, the continuous look, they're all a deliberate acts. And so the acts that a person has done, it's not a one where it can be said that a person has done it involuntarily, 
and then it, thus it caused them to release the of fluid. Now, these are all voluntary acts. And so, <coughs> it falls into each of those things. I, that it was done after, during the day, that the person did so whilst, and they did it so deliberately, kind of, it was a voluntary act by way of their choice. And they did so whilst knowing that they were fasting. Now, they did so whilst knowing while they were fasting. Allah Ta'ala knows best. <coughs> Thereafter, as why I mentioned, now, the hijama, I had a fair of the hijama. And this is something, inshallah, I want to do myself and I would, uh, I would encourage the ikhwa to do as well. So inshallah, we'll do it together. That we just look into this issue together. Now, so, here it says, and uh, generally for the speech of the Qadab, he mentions that it breaks the fast. And the one that does the hijama, as well as the one that the hijama has been done to. And this is based upon the narration where it mentions after al hajim wal mahjoom. After al hajim wal mahjoom. I had the one that does the hijab as well as the one that the jihad has been done to. Naam, have, bro have both broken the fast. Naam. However, this mas'ala is not one which is a cut and dry mas'ala. Naam, it's not just a cut and dry mas'ala. We say, okay, as long as you, if you sued the hijab, then you've broken the fast. Then there's other speech from Ahlul Ilm. And what, what would be good, inshallah, if in the next lesson, beginning of the next lesson, we discuss it together, inshallah. Naam. There's something that I want to read on further before going into any more detail with it. And inshallah, it's an encouragement for yourselves as well to look at uh, uh, some points of research and some of the speech of al al when it comes to this particular mas'ala as well. Wallahu ta'ala a'ala. So that's something which is, uh, if you like, some homework. Now, some homework for, for, for the ikhwa, inshallah. And for myself as well. Now, Thereafter, <coughs> now, look at that, because the submission went to Tara, in a halki he for bab, or gubar, or to mandla that was stun shock, for what's a halki he ba, or fakar for Anzal, or cutter fee, a lily, or a talab, or the rahul kay, lab yuf sit, so mohu. Now, and so. Here we have the masala of the one, and then Ibn Qudar mentioned different examples. So whoever, for example, the dhubab, the fly, flies into his throat. Naam. Or dust or dirt enters into his, into his throat. Or the person makes madmada was to shak. And water enters into enters into his mouth or it's, I've, I've follows through to his stomach. <coughs> when a person thinks of something and thus releases a seminal fluid or a person has a wet dream or the person vomits involuntarily all of these things do not break the fast all of these things do not break the fast do you agree Ikhwa? do you go over them again? do you agree? Nah, we'll go over them again as well, inshallah, to be sure. So, coupled together, for example, is that the fly flies into the throat of the individual, or that they swallow dirt. Now, nah, are we going to say that the person has broken the fast in such a scenario? No, why? It was not his intent. He didn't, he didn't eat Amdan. Now, nah, he didn't eat Amdan. It's not an issue, it's not, the issue is not now that a person said, but it's only dirt. Now, why? Why is that not a point of discussion even? Because when we, when we spoke about the things about eating or drinking, 
we said that it, it's irrespective of whether it's regarded as being nourishing or not. Like, irrespective of whether it's regarded as being food and nourishing food or not. No. It's if it's ingested. So the point here is the fact that it is done and it's, invol and it's involuntary. The fact that it's done involuntarily, then we know that this is an action which is uh, an action that does not nullify the fast. So a person will be skied riding his bike, riding his bike with his mouth open and a fly flies in there. No, you can't say no. With all of, even with the fact, due to the fact that it's already been tested on fly flying into his float. Like you say, you have to make up a day fasting as well? No. No. So it's, uh, in, this, in this regard, they, he doesn't have to make up anything. Now, likewise as well, we mentioned the one makes the mother not esteem sharp, and then the water enters the stomach. Are we going to say now that they that they've broken the fast? No. No. I would say generally no, but there's more tafsir. It's more detail. If they've adhered to the to the to the nasi, have the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where he said, "I that the the, the mabalaga in the istinshaq is done, except if except if you're fasting." So if now there's he's done mabalaga when it comes to the istinshaq, and then he realizes that he's he's sort of the water, then he's opposed the advice of the message of Allah. So it cannot now be said that it was done, which was an involuntary act, which was done. Now, because it's a direct opposition to the advice of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, when it comes to the wudu, which is mashru, the, the wudu, which is legislated. However, generally speaking, the person just generally making wudu, and inadvertently water enters, for lambats, inshallah. Now, lambats. Likewise as well, it mentions that the person think, a thought comes to him, and it causes him to be aroused and release the seminal fluid. Then are we going to say, now, are we going to say that this person has broken the fast? No. No. Because, of course, the thought, thoughts may come from different means. And it's not something that a person may, people... When it comes to thoughts that you have, thoughts may not always be voluntary. So thoughts that you have may not always be, always be voluntary. And likewise as well, uh, wet dreams. That if the person wants to have a wet dream, then it cannot now be said that the person has broken the fast because they're sleeping. So it cannot be held to account for anything that happens whilst they're sleeping. And finally as well, which is mentioned along with these examples, is the one that... Uh, vomits and throws up in an involuntary manner. So they don't do anything to cause themselves to throw up. They don't put their fingers in their throat or anything like that. And But however, they, they throw up. Then in such such an individual, they have not broken the fast. Such an individual has not broken the fast. Allah Ta'ala knows best. And then Ibn Khudayr mentions the final masala. And it mentions Mu'an Akal Yudunuhu Laylan Fabana Nahara After. And so he mentions whoever eats believing that it is the night so whoever's eating they believe that it's the night however it becomes clear that it is still the day then the person has broken the fast now however so in this, in this scenario, what we understand from that is that the person's eating and this is before Fajr. The person's eating is before Fajr. And then he's still eating and then he finds out that Fajr was at, let's say, 4.30. 
but he remembers the fact that he was still eating and he was still uh now he was still eating his suhoor at 445 and he looked out the window and it still seemed completely dark to him but it becomes clear at a later stage that 430 was where the fajr was in the Qadama, he mentions that in this individual he's broken the fast now does it make sense Make sense so far? Now? So such an individual has broken the fast because essentially, and it's clear why, because I says this, why? Because the person's eating whilst it's the day now. Now it's eating and it's whilst it's the day. You know it's the beginning of the day, it's the day. Shaykh al-Shaykh Ubayy, muhammadullah, he mentions, however, a suwab khilaf for that. And that which is correct is opposite of that. Why? Because the asal for such an individual is that it's the night time. I the asal is that it's the night time. The, the original state that he was aware of that which he had yakin about was that it's night time. And thus as well, we have the ayah formation ayah kalu washrabu hatta yatabayya lakum al khayt al abyad al khayt al aswad min al fajr. And eat and drink until the white thread becomes distinct from the black thread of Fajr. Naam. So it becomes distinct for you. And so, based upon this, the last I knows best, that the person is excused of that. Is excused in that regard. And now, Thereafter, the Quran mentions when I cut a shaker for two and fajr, lamb you sit so much. When I cut a shaker for غروب الشمس, فسد صومه. As whoever eats, whoever eats whilst they're in doubt. Whilst in doubt that Fajr has occurred, the arm that the Fajr and the dawn break has occurred, whether it is in this scenario, then the Khudama Rahimahullah mentioned that his fast is not nullified. However, whoever eats doubting whether the sun has risen. Now, whoever eats with the, and doubts whether the sun has risen or the, after whether the sun has set, then he has broken the fast. Sheikh Omey mentions within this affair is tafsir, within this affair is more detail. And he mentions that from one way it's sahih that such a person, that they have broken the fast and another scenario that they have not however <coughs> then we look at the hand of the individual and so the, the first scenario if it's an individual where They have uh, broken the fast, or they have shak in relation to it. They have doubt in relation to it, and it becomes clear that it is not either uh, the sun has not set. Then, upon them, no doubt is to continue to fast as soon as it becomes clear to them. And if they continue to fast, then, uh, then in that regard, that the the khata is not taken and they're not taking it into consideration for that khata as Allah Ta'ala mentions Rabbana la ta'akhidna in the sina o akhtana or Allah do not take us into account call us into account if we forget or we fall into error as for the one 
that is completely unaware of the time, for example, and is just acting upon reality, a manner which he's not sure of. So, for example, he's sleeping, he wakes up and just believes that I, should, I can eat now. Without really taking it into, into consideration any any real check in as to whether these times have occurred, then such an individual reality has nullified the fast if it turns out they are staying been eating during the daytime. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And that concludes this uh, this part of the chapter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, in our next lesson, we'll go on to the next chapter, which is the chapter pertaining to a siyam in the voluntary fasts. The person has a job, they sell haram things. Yeah. When it comes to the fast and the Mufsadat to so the things that nullify the fast, we have the things which nullify the fast in, in, its, in its origin. And we have the things that nullify the perfection and the completion of a person's fast. Right. The thing that nullify the fast in the person's origin is that if they were to do these things, the fast is null and void, and they, I, they have to make up that day, right? So these are essentially the things that we discussed today. Eating, drinking, all of these actions. Other actions as well. Then you have the things that nullify the perfection of a person's fast and the completion of a person's fast. And this is what the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, alluded to in his statement. مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلُ الزُّورِ وَعَمْلُ بِهِ لَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَ لِأَنْ يَدْعَ تَعَمُ الشَّرَابَ that whoever does not leave off a full speech and acting upon it, then Allah Ta'ala is not required for him that he leaves off his food and his drink. I mean it, that if the person does not leave off full speech, so they're speaking ill, for example, full speech could be riba, namima, lying, now, all is full speech. And acting upon full speech. Acting upon full speech is generally anything which is haram. Anything haram is when a person acts upon something which is full speech. Whoever does not leave this off, then Allah Ta'ala does not require for him that he leaves off his food and his drink. Not meaning that he's, he, he won't be, he, he has to, he's not going to fast, or the fast is not accepted. However, that action is almost futile. Now, it's, almost, it's almost useless for him to leave off his food and drink, because he's rendering that fast deficient by way of other things. So the example you're giving of the people that sell this stuff and whatever else, not that they're going to, if they fast, that their fast won't be accepted, for example, or their fast uh, won't be correct. However, it would be def- it may be deficient due to these other things that they're falling into. Okay, so yeah. they still fast, but then we leave for Allah the rest. So obviously, they know it's haram. That's it. back in the day, yeah, like I remember in like um, times of ignorance. Yeah. Wow. I remember I had you know associates you know they drug deal, but they'd be like, brother, I'm fasting. We know what's haram is clear, you know. Yeah. So this is what I'm, I'm trying to work out. Yeah, so the, the, this scenario, if they're, they're doing the, they're, they're involving themselves in muharamat, yeah, yeah. it's haram. Yeah. However, you're not going to say, now don't fast. Because it's a problem to fast. Even as we, we discussed earlier, in um, the earlier chapters, that Allah knows best a strong opinion is that it's a problem to fast. That's like a kafir. doesn't believe in Allah. doesn't worship Allah. It's still an obligation for him to fast. So they're much less a person that believes in Allah but he's fallen into other maharamat. It's just that the fast, it may, the Shalom's fast will be accepted, but it's gonna be, it may be rendered deficient due to the fact that he's fallen into other things. Exactly. But yeah. What about the one who doesn't pray? If one doesn't pray as he fasts, then and the call is a kafir. <laughs> and, the call, and if he's a kafir, then even the kafir should have to fast. 
Just says he has to pray. We're, but if we're talking about if he's rewarded for the fast, that's something else. If he doesn't pray, there's, there's many people like this here. There's many people. But they still don't pray sometimes. So what? So this, in this scenario, then it goes back to the masala of the tariq of salah. It goes back to the masala of the tariq of salah, because if we say now the one that doesn't pray, leave aside the fasting for now, we say he doesn't pray. Then we say he doesn't pray. Tariq salah is even going to be either the one that is uh, he's still regarded as being a Muslim. If he's still regarded as being a Muslim, then he can still be re- rewarded for particular actions that he does. Then the fast in this regard, they may be rewarded for the fast that he does. And then whichever man he does it. If we say, for example, we're upon the, the call of the Hanabila, that the person that leaves it off uh, due to laziness is a kafir, then in this scenario, then we'll say that this, this person is a kafir. And so due to that, the fast may be upon him, but he's not rewarded for it. Just like, you know, you, sometimes you get you get this where... Uh, like a kafir, he's got like a like a co- Muslim co-worker, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, do you know, what? I want to fast just to see what it's like, Muhammad, and then he just does it. Now, I mean, he's not going to be rewarded for it, but he's he's done, fulfilled the action. Or upon kids as well, or which one is the one who's right? Really, I'm on all. Like, she's she's not asking, she's going to be in fasting. On us, we pay a figure, or upon, so she, she can't pay like a money for it. Yeah, so upon anyone that has a, has an uliya for her, they pay, like they pay. The father. Yeah, then they pay. Anyone that has an uliya and they can pay, and usually pays in fact and on her behalf, then they, they should pay the, the figure. Every day, one. If they want for one this kid. No. Why, yeah. Even the person praying five times and fasting and getting the car, they, he don't know as well if it's accepting or not. No one knows. No one can say for sure yeah, the action is going to be accepted. No. Yeah. Or not. When we start, uh, um, as if that was just based upon the, if you know the, the hijama, when you mentioned that the, the one that, that performs hijama on an individual, um, is fasting not going to go now? No. No. Based on that, I know I've kind of answered this question, but just based off of that, if an individual was to work in a feed place and there was to feed an individual that that was supposed to be fasting, no, would that fast also be accepted as well? No, you, you, you wouldn't say that the, that is a correct. Uh, the kiyas is correct. Mm. That the kiyas necess, is necessarily uh, the fact that you are performing the hijab and, and because you're performing hijab, because you're performing the hijab, mm. that is breaking the fast. But it's uh, it's something which is specified to that action. Does that make sense? So, what you would say though is that if a person is serving food to the one to the Muslim, let's say, and is fasting, then what it would enter into is the uh, masala of Abu Ida al Shay Kafailihi. Yeah, the master the or the Qa'i, sorry, the principle of Abu Eid al Shay Kafailihi. The one that ate some of the something is that one doing it. Now, I so not that you will you broke on the fast necessarily, but whatever sin is upon that individual may be upon you as well because you've aided someone in that sin. Now, and that that principle is understood and taken from the narration that uh, discusses um, Allah at the river. Where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned the Latin is upon the one that takes the river, the one that writes it down, the one that witnesses it, now nah, the one that is uh, uh, the, the one that is the, the wakil for it. So anyone that's involved in that 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 transaction of river is liable for the Latin. Why? Because they've all aided in that transaction. So we understand generally from that narration that anyone that aids someone in something can attain the same uh, recompense of that action. Whether it's good or bad, now, and so that would be more. That pr- principle is more uh, relevant for that masala of feeding someone or maybe serving food to Muslim, whilst it is Ramadan and they should be fasting. Now that is more relevant than 
So if you eat the food, when does it where does you put it? It gets stuck in your throat. Okay. You're like, you're choking and stuff. Mm. You choke it up, and then you're like, no, I'm not going to eat it. No. Then that's a break the fasting. It has to, the, the condition that, it, what's going to let you That it reaches the stomach. Then then we say in this scenario, be, say for example, someone he eats, he puts something in his mouth, and he, and he remembers, he yeah. spits it out, then there's a broken the fast. Now, hence why as well when the, it's called as mentioned, like for example, you brush your teeth. You could use you could use toothpaste, conventional toothpaste to brush your teeth, as long as it doesn't reach the the stomach. Because obviously you're, you're you're brushing your teeth and you spit it out. If you look and you could you could taste the food, you have to be very skillful with that. People can do it. People have some people are very good at it. Mashallah. It's easy. I I don't, I don't, I don't it doesn't look easy to me. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you taste it in your tongue. I, 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 I get, I get the concept, but I, I just don't, you know. I just don't, I just don't know how you, you carry it. Inshallah. <laughs> Spit it out. I said you've been fasting all day, or you've fasted throughout the day. Yeah, alhamdulillah. But no, if you taste the food, the lava. No. The rule of prayer salah has to has to pray, but uh, if generally speaking, <coughs> is it intoxicated? Then of course he has to, he should uh, he should wait to the, to the time where he's back to his senses essentially, right? If not, the time of the prayer goes. Allah knows best because. The time for the prayer takes so much precedence over everything, really and truly. Even, even for example, uh, Sheikh Fawzan gives the example of the one where there's no water. There's no water to make wudu. And then um, he has nothing to make together with either. No, nah, and at the time, <coughs> the obligation of praying at the time take precedence over over everything, basically. No, you cannot. But that's uh, that. But the the precedence is to pray at this time, anyway. The president that that's the precedence to pray at this time. So if the person is in that state, then it still needs to pray. So I'm Um, no, has to tackle them with that. So school. You might not get the full reward for the prayer. Am I correct in saying that you won't get the full reward for the prayer, and you might even get skimmed, but you fulfill fulfill the obligation. You fulfill the obligation. However, because it's still sinful, and what we understand from the one that is intoxicated, <coughs> the one that's intoxicated. Is that the Salah not accepted for 40 days? Where well, the sound from that is that it's only to pray for 40 days. It's just that's not going to accept it. So, it still has to pray. So, would that be similar to you for your intoxication? And Allah was best now. So, the intoxication, if, uh, would mean that they, they, they would still need to, they would still need to pray, but they're not rewarded for it. So this is the, essentially part of the punishment for that action. That they're not going to be rewarded, but if they leave it off, they'll still be punished as if they left it off anyway. You'd be sinful if you leave it off. No. That's part of the punishment. Hold on. Yeah. Leave. <laughs>
Das ist für Leute. Nein. We discussed last week, such a person, when we're talking, it, the, the two types of illness as well, of course. So you have the one, the illness where it's uh, short term, and the illness which is where it's not, in, it's, chronic, it's a chronic illness, where it's not, it's not regarded as being an illness where you think that the person will be cured from it. Either or, if it is anticipated that the person may become more or increase in weakness, if they fast, then you will say that the person should continue to uh, or should break the fast in that regard. And so in that scenario, if it is uh, just an illness that is a temporary illness, they make up the days when they're able to make up the days. So like a, it's a long-term illness, but this person's got an issue with their thyroid, so if they don't take medication, for example, yeah. every day, yeah. they're going to get weaker. Yeah. So then in this scenario, then they... they they uh they should feed the mosquito each day that they they, they so throughout the whole life so the doctor says that they can't do anything about it. No. But as as we mentioned as well, it's very important that the person gets the opinion of the Muslim doctor, trustworthy Muslim doctor, um, in order for that for that ruling to be one which is relevant, inshallah. Because generally speaking the per the, the, the Muslim doctor we mentioned there may not be a case that they, they even have uh, evil intent when they say don't fast. But because of the fact that they don't know, that they're not aware of the the value of fasting and the key of fasting on Ladin and, and the likes of that, then they may just advise with that without taking that into consideration. So it's very important that the person, first and foremost, gets the opinion of a trustworthy Muslim doctor. If a trustworthy Muslim, Muslim doctor says such a thing, then should I take that opinion? And yeah, throughout the throughout the lifetime, um, you know, feed the mosquitoes through, through those days of fasting they cannot do. Assalamu alaikum. عمره أو نفسه وعمره لل لل هذه مسألة ال نعم ويظهر يعني يعني أنه يستطيع ولكن ليس من السنة لا لا نقول يعني هل أنه عمل يعني من من السنة أو حتى أنه نكون مخالف للسنة لكن لأنه هم توصوا لا ما ما ذهبوا يعني بعمره لكن الذي نقول والله أعلم الذي يفعل هذا قد يكون يعني يتبعه أكثر يتبعه في ذلك فمن سد الضرائع أحسن من لا يفعله يفعله كثير من الناس أمور واحدة لكن إذا رأى يعني مثلا رأى في ذاك في ذاك الحين رأى المناسبة أو في في نوع من ضرورة مثلا لا يستطيع ان يسافر الا هذه هذه الرحله مثلا ما عنده ما عنده مال كثير فعنده ال 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 ايوه عنده امكانيه للسفر في ذاك الوقت فقط فيكون في 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 ذاك الحين يعني الموضوع يعني ايوه في ذاك الحين في نوع من السعه في الموضوع والله Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes.